Welcome to the Credit Union Business News Podcast, the only all digital, all business resource for credit unions. This episode sponsored by Bader Training and Consulting. We create environments where employees actually want to come to work and members want to keep coming back. Hi, I'm Ken Bader, your host for the Credit Union Business News Podcast, and wanted to share something with you before we get to the great discussion that I had with my colleague, Cami Baker, on collaboration, because I want to talk to you briefly about collaboration. Here we are in the midst of a pandemic, and we have no events in the credit union industry. Uh, at least it seems like that. I know that, that one of my favorite events, uh, which is the Credit Union uh, Leadership Convention, I believe it used to be called the uh, Director's Convention or something along those lines in Vegas, uh, has gone virtual. And a number of other conferences, uh, including one that I run myself for the Police Officers Credit Union Association, has also largely been online or have at least been postponed. And I know that a lot of entities, um, including the leagues out there, uh, what we're doing in the POCUA and so forth, are doing a great job of providing education online, uh, whether that's a panel, uh, whether that's a seminar, webinar, uh, whether that's some type of an interactive session via Zoom or go to meeting and so forth. So we're not missing out on education, but it seems like we're missing out on collaboration. More specifically, we're missing out on this, yes, taking a sip of coffee here because that is where a lot of the best conversations are happening or did happen at conferences. Uh, what we're missing out are those conversations at the coffee break or during the coffee break. What we're missing are those conversations at dinner when the conference is over for the day. What we're missing are those conversations in the elevator, those conversations, you know, sitting in the lounge over a glass of wine and talking about what is your credit union doing? How are you handling this problem? How are you attacking this particular subject or issue? You know, what do you do when this happens at your credit union? That's what we're not having as much of, uh, but we could still have it in this type of forum. That's why we created the Credit Union Business News Online Collaboration Group. It has launched this June. Uh, we've already begun scheduling meetings and having meetings. So if you're a VP level or above, uh, come and talk to me. Uh, my number is 714-681-2821 or connect with me on LinkedIn or send me an email at kbater, B-A-T-O-R, at btcinc.net and join the collaboration group. Yeah, have a cup of coffee with us and let's have some of those discussions as to what are the opportunities now, even in this chaos and turmoil? You know, how are we going to handle collections maybe two or three months down the line? You know, how are we going to continue building and implementing our strategy when maybe we don't even know what the heck's going to happen in January or February. These are the types of questions that we discuss within the Credit Union Business News Collaboration Group. We meet twice a month. Right now, it's for VP and C-level executives of credit unions. However, you know, we can always adapt to a future leaders program and also possibly a CUSO or credit union provider program if need be. But for now, it is VP level and above. Uh, so let's have those discussions like we would at the water cooler. Let's have those discussions, even though we're still kind of sheltering in place, even as things are opening up, uh, let's have those conversations to keep our credit union industry rolling, uh, especially when there is a lot of opportunity out there. And just as important, let's keep your individual credit union on the path of growth, even during these chaotic and tumultuous times by collaborating with other thought leaders within the industry. So again, kbater, B-A-T-O-R at btcinc.net. Contact me. 
we'd love to have you be a part of the collaboration group. Now, let's hear the discussion that I was privileged to have with Cami Baker on collaboration. And I have not only a great guest, but a real special guest. You know, I love bringing on credit union executives, but I also love bringing on thought leaders from outside the industry that could give us a valuable and sometimes different perspective. And that's what our great guest is going to give us today. Let me tell you about her. Her name is Cami Baker, uh, and she is an expert at creating profitable collaboration. Hear that collaboration, we should be doing more of that, with a social responsibility edge, and that we are really good at in the credit union industry. Cami Baker is America's authority on leveraging social responsibility in business development. She has been creating collaboration between for-profit and non-profit for 18 years through purpose leverage marketing campaigns, and we need that now. That have included some of the largest Fortune 500 companies, hundreds of Main Street USA businesses, and visionary forward-thinking causes. I can go on and on about all the stages and all the great stuff that she does, but I want you to hear from Cami. Cami, welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me. I, you know, it was such an honor to meet you at the New Media Summit, plug, plug, and, <laughs> um, and to be asked to come on and, and share some views around collaboration, having gone to literally thousands of networking events in my day and spoken at hundreds of them, I've met a lot of people that don't know how to collaborate. So it's time for us to bring that energy up, right? Yeah, it, it is definitely that time. Uh, even if we have to do it for a number of months uh, via this type of forum, it is definitely time. And yes, you're one of a number and I do mean a number of great guests that I've had at the New Media Summit. We've even had a couple already on the Credit Union Business News Podcast and also on my other shows, Branding the Experience and Cool Culture Corner. Plug, plug. <laughs> See, you're not the only one that can plug. Uh, but the New Media Summit really brings some, some great professionals to bear. But let's talk about you. How, how did you become this collaboration expert, per se? You know, uh, school of hard knocks, um, it certainly wasn't something that I was looking to participate in, but as you heard in my pitch about 20 years ago, um, I, was, um, I was going to the daycare at 5 p.m. in the afternoon to pick up my two-year-old, and at 5 in the afternoon, I stumbled into the daycare, and I picked her up in my arms and we were having a mommy and me weekend and I smelled the alcohol from my own breath in her face. And I just, in that moment of clarity thought, she doesn't know what this smell is yet, but she will. And I'm going to be a huge disappointment. And I'm going to be that drunk mom laying on the couch, you know, with, with people coming and going and not knowing what's going on in her life and being an embarrassment. So um, so from there, I, I, I wish I could tell you that was the last time I drank. It wasn't, but I did get sober. And because of that, it led me on a whole journey of reading books and going to personal development seminars. You know, I've, I spent so much time trying to fix myself. And I now realize that I'm not broken. I'm human. And we are not, you know bad people trying to be good. We are sick people trying to be well, as we say in one of the 12-step programs. And because of wanting to be well uh, and, and all of the journeys that I've been on, that's what has led me to, to today and, and what I specialize in. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate you sharing that. Um, and you're exactly right. Um, you know, we're sick people trying to, to, to get well and stay well. Uh, being an alcoholic myself, I, I don't share this on the show very often, uh, but know that it's, uh, it's a journey and a, and a struggle uh, and happy to be sober myself. So I, I not only appreciate your story, uh, but understand your, your struggle and, and, and appreciate from, from where you've come. I don't have any kids, so I didn't blow any alcoholic breath on anybody, but you know, I had, I had my day of realization of, you know, what am I doing too? I think we, we all end up doing that. Um, well, you know, so ahead. often when I speak, I, I talk about the alcoholism and people inadvertently, whether it's live or video, 
um, they come and say to me, either they themselves have had some type of an addiction issue or they can simply relate to being in a bad place and making poor decisions and putting yeah. your big girl panties or your big boy underoos on and taking control. A few months ago, I was speaking with my mother about the brother that I had that was three years older than me who passed away from uh, overdose. And we were talking about how the reason I'm alive and he's dead is because I took responsibility. Yeah. He spent his whole life making excuses and pointing fingers and it was everybody else's fault but his. But you know what I'd like our listeners to hear, no matter what you're doing, CEO, employee, entrepreneur, sick, not sick, young, old, whatever, take responsibility for where you are because everything in your life, good or bad, guess what? You created it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. Um, and we could do, frankly, a whole show on that just from all of my mistakes. Uh, and many of them will be quite funny. Maybe I'll do a comedy routine on that one of these days. Um, but, you know, going back to, to collaboration, you know, we, and speaking of funny, you know, we had a very funny conversation uh, right before uh, I pressed record and we started the show in that, you know, while I love the credit union industry and what it stands for, you know, having been in this industry for over 25 years, you know, this so-called cooperative network many times isn't that cooperative. Uh, you know, we, we almost have to teach people um, not only how to cooperate, but how to collaborate. And I've got a story that I, I'll tell a little bit later, but, you know, you were saying, you know, it, outside of the credit union industry that, that chambers of commerce know nothing about commerce many times and that BNI, you know, knows, knows nothing about networking. You know, can you talk a little bit about, you know, some of those, those observations of people not knowing how to collaborate? <laughs> Well, you know, because I, I got sober and um, I, I've always been entrepreneurial. When I was eight years old, I saw that kids had money in their pocket and they wanted gum. So I started buying gum and bringing it to school and selling it at a 500% markup. And people say to me, how did you Girl. come up with that? And I always think, how did you not? How do you not see where the opportunity is in the world? But, but you know, back to when I, when I got sober, I answered an ad in the newspaper uh, long story short, got hired by a real estate company and started out as a listing coordinator, helping a, a really top producing agent, which gave me huge amounts of experience in, in a very short period of time. And when I became a, a realtor, the first thing I realized was, okay, um, I need to meet people. I need to meet a lot of people. I need to meet the right people. I need to build credibility and respect and all of that fun stuff. So I started learning about how to do this whole collaborative social responsibility way back when the first big commission check I got within the first year of my real estate career, I bought a 64 and a half Mustang convertible. And with that car, I uh, started doing antique car shows. And from the very first one, I realized that, that the people come in with their car, they were all given $20 to register. Even when I didn't know how to take their money, I was completely green. I didn't know what I was doing. I just had this really cool car and I wanted to promote myself. So I realized, well, if there's gonna be 50 cars here given 20 bucks a piece, somebody could use that thousand dollars. So I found a rescue uh, farm that rescued horses. And for seven years, I started giving that money to the, to the rescue farm. And to answer your question, as I was a real estate agent, going to networking events, going to BNI, Chambers of Commerce, women's events, morning, noon, and night, I've literally been to six of in one day, in one day. Uh, when I lived in New York City, they're everywhere. So I, I just really can, I've met thousands and thousands of people that from the beginning don't know how to give a good handshake or make eye contact. And all Now a word from our sponsor, Beta Training and Consulting. Would you like to create an experience both for your employees and your members that increases productivity and sets your credit union on a straight path for growth, even in these times? Then let's talk. Let's set up a 15-minute consultation where we talk about your unique institution and how we can increase productivity and growth, whether your credit union is $1 million in assets, 10 billion in assets or anywhere in between. 
And during that complimentary session, let's also talk about our B plus C plus S snapshot, formerly called our B plus C plus S audit. We do a deep dive into your brand, culture, and strategy. It's often the perfect start in working with beta training and consulting and provides a real value in a full report providing observations and implementable actions for the enhancements of your brand, culture, and strategy. This service also includes a two-hour video meeting with me, Ken Bader, to review the report with you and your management team and discuss how we can create a well-branded experience for your employees and members that's going to increase productivity and help the growth of your institution. To learn more, send an email directly to me at kbator, B-A-T-O-R, at btcinc.net. Again, that's kbator at btcinc.net. Stop making statements. Hey, it was nice to meet you at the event. Hope you have a great weekend. You know, people just don't know how to set appointments. So with all of that case study and literally experience and hiring coaches and all this stuff, it's really, really clear that the average person has a hard time introducing themselves or following up, much less collaborating. Going back to the networking, because you, you kind of need to understand how to connect with people before you even you know, go so far as to collaborate and do stuff <laughs> with, with somebody. And you, you, it's a great segue into the story that uh, I alluded to, is many people in the audience know that one of the businesses that I run is the Police Officers Credit Union Association. Um, and one of the main three tenets is to spark collaboration. Uh, but, it, and, we do a, and we do a conference every year. This year, it's uh, going to be postponed because of our coronavirus pandemic here. Um, but we, we've done 17, actually we've done 16. The 17th has been postponed. We've done 16 annual meetings. And in one of them, about, I want to say, five or six years ago, um, in the evaluations, we got uh, a couple of comments of there wasn't very much networking. And I'm like, really? What you, we, had, we had an opening reception before the thing even started. We had two breakfasts where, you know, people were walking by the buffet table. We had a huge lunch. We had a dinner all together. Uh, on the very first full day, you know, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm pointing to all these things as I'm really confused as to the comments. And then it dawned on me, you know, especially with all of my work with personality assessments, whether it be DISC or predictive index or whatever, I said, you know what, you know, a lot of these folks, you know, even the CEOs got to that level because they were so expert at finance or operations, you know, very uh, management moving things and projects around and not necessarily people, even though they have to manage people. And I thought, you know what, for some people, even at that level, doing this, you're going, putting your hand out and saying, hi, you know, my name is, you know, Xavier Lipschitz or whatever it is. Uh, and no, there is not a Xavier Lipschitz in the Police Officers Credit Union Association just making up that name right off the cuff. Um, this is part of the comedy program that'll probably never make it on the show. But anyhow, it dawned on me that, you know what, it's not the most comfortable thing to do. We actually ended up doing is we created for all the next annual meetings is a, is a semi-formal networking program where we actually move people around every 20 minutes. It's almost like speed dating for executives, where they're forced to go to different tables. We have starter questions on a sheet, but that has always been, since we instituted, the number one rated session for our conference every single year. And it forces people to meet uh, many other people in the, uh, in the conference. <clears throat> and it focuses them, not talking about them, but asking the questions and covering those questions on the sheet. So to your point about asking questions, it's really spot on. Well, you, know, you, you mentioned to me when we started, you, you noticed my spider here, and I mentioned that it's part of my brand, and I'd love to, this Please. is a beautiful segue to that, 
So when we go to these networking events, yours, mine, and everybody else's, and by the way, networking isn't just a place we go, it's everywhere we are all the time, in line at Dunkin' Donuts, at your kid's baseball game, whatever. You're always, networking means connecting, really. But when we go to these events, we see the same archetypes. We see the person who is shoving a card in everybody's hand. They walk up to the group, they give a card to everyone, they are spraying and praying that something will happen with all these cards. And it's quite repelling because you don't even know them. Those are the skunks. Then there are the people who are grabbing a card from everybody. They walk up to the table. Hey, you got a card? You got a card? Let me grab that card. They're at the expos and the trade shows grabbing cards off all the tables. And they leave with that big stack of cards that they squirrel away in their pocket so they can put you on their boring email list but they don't know how to connect or conversate. And then there are the people, dun, 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 dun. Hey, try my product, join my company, sign my contract. And the whole time you're talking to them, they're looking around the room, looking for the next victim. So if we don't wanna be a skunk, a squirrel, or a shark, and this is in my book, Mingle to Millions, and I've also added now the sloth that's just over there in the corner uh -huh. of the phone. <laughs> But if you don't want to be one of those, what I suggest is we be the spider. Because when you think about a spider, a spider is very strategic. When it finds its place, it makes connections. She makes her connections and creates a net web. And when you think about a spider, a spider doesn't hunt or chase or uh, you know, attack. They wait for that which they want to come to them in their web. So if we meet all of these archetypes everywhere we go, and believe me, I was the skunk, the shark, the squirrel, all in one night, all in one night, because I was hungry and I was aggressive and I had a young baby to take care of and I was a woman in a man's world and I needed to prove myself. So I know that there's all these relationships that I burnt and that I didn't have the opportunity to have because of who I was being. So when I have this conversation about the spider analogy, the next question then is, okay, well, if I don't want to be a skunk, a squirrel, or a, or a shark, how do I be a spider? So when we go from networking, which is random activity, to net webbing, which is what I teach, mm -hmm. is planned strategy, now, when we go to those events or when we go to a big three-day conference, we set intention before we go. We pay attention while we're there with our language and our body language and our questions so that we can create the retention of the relationships, the resources, and the revenue. Yeah, that is so many great points yeah, as you were as you were speaking i was thinking of so many you know, credit union uh industry events whether they be conventions or um chapter meetings or what have you um and you know i i remember you know back in my alcoholic days especially in the late 90s being that salesperson for a corporate credit union you know with after a couple of drinks going you know hey ken bader damn glad to meet you what corporate do you work with <laughs> you know no, no no wonder nobody wanted to talk to me uh, <laughs> but i see that even today whether it be a credit union association meeting, you know, this, these are good tips for some of our credit union business partners out there uh, because you see these clicks. Um, you know, I was at a very, very big conference uh, last year, probably like 2,000 people, and you, you're in this big hall and you see these, these clicks, these little pods you know, of small credit unions all talking together because they don't want to be sold and they don't want to, you know, talk to the big credit unions and say something that's going to lead to a merger they don't want. Um, and then you see, you know, all these big credit unions kind of looking around and, <laughs> and, you know, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes, you know, a little on the on the arrogant side of, you know, why am I even here? <laughs> and, and then you see all these, these vendors that are doing, you know, uh, they're, they're doing the skunk, they're doing the squirrel, they're doing the shark, um, you know, which aren't, which aren't dances. <laughs> Unfortunately, I guess you can make them. <laughs> 
They're very common though. And when I give this analogy, people always laugh because they recognize, they know that they are one of those. Very, very, very few are actually spiders. So there's two things about that. When we do go to conferences and we do go to that local networking event, you know, to really start honing in and thinking, okay, what is my intention for going here? What can I do yeah. to have a unique sales proposition? So for example, as a real estate person or a financial services or a network marketer or a bank executive, every event you go to, there's four, five, eight of you at that event, especially real estate and financial services. So how can you have a unique sales proposition and not say what everybody else is saying. Hey, I'm a realtor. I sure would love your referral. I give the best damn service in town. Yeah, you and everybody else. So if we're <laughs> going to go to networking events, let's have a unique sales proposition. And then the other side of it is when we want to build our business, don't try to build them at networking events. We go because we want to meet people and we want to learn and we have a social circle. But when we want to build our business, wouldn't it be smarter to actually go where our clients are? So for example, uh, real estate. Last year, I did a purpose leverage marketing campaign with the president of the Board of Realtors in New Hampshire. One of them, uh, we were doing something called Realtors for Recovery, which partnered with the Rotary, and it was all about the opioid crisis. And there was a realtor there who said, look, you know, I want to help and everything, but I got to be honest, how do I, how do I leverage this in my business? Well, we were doing a diaper drive for a, a, a home where women were having babies coming off opioids and they need diapers. So I explained to this agent, look, instead of going to all the typical networking events you go to, how about if you spent 30 days not going to any networking events, but focusing on this campaign, you take the flyer that we are doing the diaper drive and you think about where are your ideal clients? Her ideal clients were people who own a home and they've got kids, but the kids are getting older. So they want to sell and get the next bigger home. Kids are six, seven years old, etc. I said, where do they go? They go to the dojo karate studio. They go to the dance studio. They go to the orthodontist. They go to the pediatrician. They go to the mommy and me places, etc. And car dealerships and insurance and stuff like that. I said, if you get 10 businesses that all are, are, they're not competitive, but they are complementary. They all have those same clients too. You go to the orthodontist, you say, hey, we're doing this diaper drive. Here's a flyer. Let's make you a drop off location. And when we do, I'll do a Facebook live with you. I'll let everybody know they can come to Dr. Smith's office at 123 Main Street to drop off diapers blah, blah, blah. And the fact is all your 500 people, all your parents will see that. They'll know your contribution. 87% of the marketplace will choose you over the other guy when they know that you're on purpose. So now that we've done that video for your orthodontist place, I'm going to do it at the dance studio. I'm going to do it at the pediatrician. I'm going to do it at the karate dojo. And now when I teach all of these people how to like, comment, and share each other's Facebook lives, Within one week, every one of those businesses is interacting and referring and introducing each other to each other's clients, whether they know it or not. And now thousands of people have not only seen each of these businesses, but they saw the person doing the video. And when you're looking for a unique sales proposition, it doesn't get any better than that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a number of good points that I want to hit on over there, especially as they directly apply to, to credit unions. Um, first, the collaboration. Then I want to get back to the social responsibility because uh, from a social responsibility angle, that is one area credit unions do very well, but they don't necessarily always do a good job of leveraging that. And that's what you've talked about. But back to the collaboration yeah, and you know, to all credit unions listening, whether you know you're a large asset credit union or a small asset credit union or a credit union uh, business partner that serves credit unions, uh, or a credit union employee for that matter that's trying to get a better job and move up the industry, you know, when when you're out there networking and collaborating, you know, what I heard from you, Cami, is have a strategy beforehand. 
you know, don't just go because you know what? I will tell you that in, in admit on this show that the animal that I have become late in my career has been the sloth. I'll go and I'll speak. I'll go and I'll speak at a credit union event. And because I don't want to be salesy and push my consulting services, uh, and because I don't want to break into some of these pods, yeah, if, if I see somebody that I know, yes, I'll go and say, hey, how are you doing? But if I don't recognize anybody, you know, I'll sit there and go, well, they heard me speak. If they liked it, you know, they'll come by and I'll be, all right, what's going on? I'll, it's a good time to check email here, da 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 um, and I don't well, want to be I'm, that I'm, sloth, so I'm going to change. So you're going to you're going to chastise me, aren't you? No. Here's where <laughs> I'm going to. I want every, I want everybody to have a visual of this. Uh, really have a visual. Imagine this real estate person with this diaper drive in the flyer. Imagine if the credit union, and I I am on a mission to shift from sponsorship to collaboration. We're not sponsoring anymore. Sponsoring is passive. Here's $500, go promote me. No, collaborate. So if on every flyer, on every post on Facebook, on every email that goes out to all these thousands of people, imagine the credit union's logo and or banner uh, training logo is on that flyer. And now you have people out giving your flyer to thousands of people with your logo on it. And you're helping to support, in this case, these ladies that are coming off opioids. So now when we're at a networking event, when somebody says, hey, what do you do? 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 <laughs> we can say, well, I'm so glad that you asked because what I'm doing right now is a diaper drive for these wonderful women who are mm -hmm. taking in the initiative and they're coming off opioids and they're having these babies and they need the diapers. So yeah. right now, that's what I'm doing. We're gathering up 10,000 diapers. This is a whole different way of starting a conversation right. so that we don't feel like we need to be a sloth or a skunk or any of that kind of stuff. So really envision the, the bigness of, of having a campaign where you're not just sponsoring, you're actually collaborating. Yeah. And all these 10 business people can all come to your credit union's uh, conference room. And instead of just talking about introducing each other, they're together and they yeah. learn how to like, comment, and share and do these videos. So I just, I just really get really passionate about that. Because all these people say, our credit union's the best. I give the best service in the industry. My rates are the cheapest. My pill's going to make you live forever. You're going to be more beautiful with my lotion. I help people make money from home. Well, then get together and collaborate <laughs> and get in front of those people. And when you do it with a little bit of social responsibility treacled in there, the thing is, all those people may not promote themselves, <clears throat> but they will promote that they're helping the women yeah. coming off opioids or the horses that are being slaughtered or the veterans that are homeless. Help people get out of their own way. Stop talking about yourself. Start talking about, so here's my little tagline. Don't talk about what you do. Talk about what you're doing. Uh -huh. Yeah, I I like that a lot, and I've seen I've seen this a number of times. While while credit unions do an excellent job at doing the social responsibility, um, I would say that in general there are certainly exceptions. In general, they're they're not as good as they should be. Some very poor at leveraging that social responsibility. I, I personally believe that there's nothing wrong if you're doing good and it's legitimate and it's sincere that you get that out there. Um, that's one of the best branding tools and tactics that you could ever have. Um, in fact, and I've told this story, I don't think I've told it on this show. I, I think I've uh, mentioned it a couple times on branding the experience, but many years ago, when I ran marketing and business development, we, uh, we were very passionate at, uh, at the credit union of giving to Second Harvest, uh, which was basically a food drive for, for, for people that need it and it definitely would be big now. Um, and, and the credit union did an awesome job of supporting that charity. And we had come up with a program 
um, rather than using money for something else from a marketing standpoint, that would, you, we would use it for second harvest, but use it in a way that would be very visible and be a great PR tool, which we did. And we created a couple of press releases on it and we sent it to the CEO. And about a few weeks later, I noticed, you know, hey, you know what, these, I, I don't remember getting those press releases approved. Uh, I don't remember seeing them anywhere. You know, I wonder what happened to those. And I went to the chief operating officer, who was my boss at the time, and I said, did we send out those press releases on what we did for Second Harvest? And he kind of shakes his head, he says, no. And I'm like, well, why? <laughs> he says, well, the CEO decided that we just give for the sake of giving and we shouldn't be tooting our horn. Uh, I'm like, well, you know, one, if we did it, why wouldn't we want people to know about it? And, and two, and that, don't get me wrong, I think we should just give for the sake of giving, but also in the credit union industry, it's our members' money. You know, they're owners of these institutions. Shouldn't they have a right to know the good things that we're doing with their money? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad you bring that up, Ken, because that does come up in my conversations. Well, I want to be anonymous. I don't want to toot my own horn. I don't want to be braggadocious. But here's my response to that. If you really want to help Second Harvest, don't you think that they need exposure? Yep. Don't you think that they need people to know that they exist so that other people can donate or volunteer or so that the people who need their services can go and be served by them? So that's number one. Number two, when you're doing a campaign like this, people from all over the country will see you and you will actually inspire others. I cannot tell you how many people have seen what I'm doing in New England and end up doing it in Phoenix or Florida or California. I did a broad drive here, Braziers. It was October, <laughs> which is Breast Cancer Awareness. Yeah. We did this broad drive. I had people from all over the country shipping bras to that place. And I told them all, I said, you know, thank you so much. That's very kind of you. However, there are places in your backyard. You don't need to spend $40 to send us a box full of bras. Go down and donate them in your own, you know, homeless shelters and taking care of those people. So, you know, when we are promoting this, it isn't about, hey, look at us, look at all the good we're doing. It's yeah. not about that. It's about, hey, we can get 10 bras, but with everyone, we can get 10,000. Or when I do a coat drive, I've only got two coats and my office yeah. may can come up with 20, but what about getting 2,000 coats donated by everyone? Yeah. So anytime someone says, well, are you saying you want to make money off the backs of the veterans that are suffering? <laughs> no, you limited thinking doof. It's about how can, you, how can you let people know what you're doing so that it inspires, so that it gets that many more people doing it. And from a business perspective, there is statistic after statistic that 87% of consumers, customers, and clients will choose the company or service that is on purpose. So if there's two credit unions, there's you know two bankers, two realtors, two dog walkers, if everything else is comparative, when people know that this one is helping the community, 87% will go to them. It's the one that can actually leverage it and go a step beyond and above to let people know what they're doing. And I love that you say that, you know, your, your thing with your company is helping to have um, employees want to come to work, right? Mm -hmm. So when you are actually doing these kind of campaigns, there's another statistic out there. Right now, 50% of the workforce, when we're in normal times, are millennial. And by 2025, 75% of the workforce will be millennial. And I bring that up because 62% of them won't even work for you if you're not on purpose. Yeah. And they will work for less money to work for a company that's on purpose. So when you're actually doing something in the community and giving your employees the opportunity to be a part of that dog walk or be a part of that car show, you are attracting a higher talent 
They are happier. They're coming to work more regularly. They're saying great things about you and the company to their friends instead of bitching, moaning, and complaining uh -huh. about their employer. There's so much to be said for that. I love what you said about employees because you're 100% right. Uh, in fact, I, I wrote an article, I wrote two articles about uh, you know, this is the time for credit unions, especially because a lot of the millennials and Gen Z that are just getting into the workforce, um, they're very attuned to this social responsibility uh, quotient or aspect of the company that they work for. Um, and credit unions have been doing that for decades. For decades you know maybe they don't necessarily promote it well enough but they have been doing it for, for, for decades so they fit in perfectly uh, to that type of, of mentality Kevin uh, thank you so much for a lot of insight uh, more insight than I actually bargained for this morning I learned a lot last question that I have for you for anybody in our audience they could really use your expertise and needs to tap into your brilliance. How best can they find you? Well, I am real, I'm raw, I'm relatable, and I'm reachable. So <laughs> when, you, when you Google Cami Baker, CamiBaker.com, Cami at CamiBaker.com, and my phone number. That's right. The phone can be used the way God intended with an actual call, 603 785 25 Nine, eight. You can text, you can email, you can Facebook, you can send a carrier pigeon or a smoke signal, and I'm reachable. Perfect, perfect. Well, get that carrier pigeon ready. Uh, <laughs> send it out to Cammy. Uh, if, if my pigeon's still alive, I'm going to do that. If not, then I'll just go to text. Thank you very much for being an awesome guest. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you to all of you that have either been watching or listening to this episode of the Credit Union Business News Podcast. And we will be back with you in approximately two weeks with another great session. Take care. Learn more about Credit Union Business News at creditunionbusiness.com. Suggestions for the Credit Union Business News Podcast can be directed to Tim O'Hara at tim at cubusiness.com or Ken Bader at kbader, B-A-T-O-R, at btcinc.net. To learn more about this episode's sponsor, please go to btcinc.net.